podcast excellence since 2005. This is the King of Podcasts Radio Network, kingofpodcasts.com. Can TikTok really get your relationship to the next level? We are all a little depraved and debaucherous. Here is the king of podcasts. This is a very quirky subject today on the program. TikTok dating trends. Because for whatever reason, Inside Hook decided to go and write about it. A few other places also have been commenting on what TikTok has done to help stir up people and their interest in trying to go ahead and bring up a chance, give people a chance to go ahead and date, find relationships, or take the relationship to the next step to marriage. And there's a lot of things that we see out there that might be causing it. I don't know if it's true or not, but it couldn't hurt to go ahead and find out what they're trying to come and say here. So Inside Hook put a great story out. Is your partner test t- testing you with TikTok trends? And they mentioned the TikTok trends that are on here. Logan Bahan makes a story about this. And we've heard about these for a while, but for whatever reason, this has been brought up here. So Logan makes the point here and says that according to hundreds of TikTok, uh, TikTok creators, I'm not just ugly. I just have cortisol face. It's a made up medical term. Supposedly explanation for puffer facial features caused by high cortisol levels or stress. So you could buy a supplement to the TikTok shop to try to get you to go and buy into that and help you in your, it might be finding the beauty secret, the ashwagandha to your whatever. I don't know, something stupid like that. And then others have shamed women for their feminine odor, convincing them to buy bioartic capsules in order, in order to ensure they taste good. So you could buy, you know, something to go ahead and take care of your snatch is go ahead and it's going to be smelling great and it's going to be wonderful to the palate. But there are certain tests out there relationship tests that have been circulating the internet in the last year. These are not new, but this is coming across. And this is this time of year of the cuffing season that we are upon right now. We're getting closer and closer to Halloween, closer and closer to Thanksgiving, New Year's, Christmas, all of it up to Valentine's day. So maybe some of you have discovered you're in cuffing season. Now, granted the weather across the country has not gotten to that point where we're getting the crispness of the air, the leaves changing so much. Some of it's happened, but not as much like right now in New York city and up in the Northeast, they're still in seventies, eighties weather. They're not bundling up too much right now under a knife of fireplace. I mean, I don't know what Canada's looking like right now, but maybe they are, but maybe some of you have been out there so far after labor day and you just happen to get yourself feeling like you're lucky to have found love. And now you're in the throes of like a real, enigmatic, exciting whirlwind romance right now thinking, Oh, this might be the one you don't know what they're, how they came to you and how this all came about, but let's go ahead and talk about it. So there's names like the orange peel theory and the bird test. So let's go and take a couple of those. The orange peel theory, which we already know about if a girl asks her boyfriend or significant other to peel an orange for them, will they do it? And that's one of the things they talk about right here. So let's take this story and let's see what happens if she did pass. Babe. Yeah. I really want an orange right now. You want an orange? Mm-hmm. Like the fruit? Yeah. Um, we don't, I don't think we have any oranges. Okay. Um, do you think you could like go get me one and peel it for me? Uh, are you serious? Yeah. I like uh, really want an orange. Yeah, that's fine. I just don't, I don't know how to peel an orange. Oh. We have, we have fruit cups. Do okay. you want me to get you a fruit cup? Okay. I think we have fruit cups. One of these? I don't think there's orange. So, if there was an orange to be peeled, that's the test. Okay, we already get that idea. This is a very interesting one they decided to get put in the story, but yeah, basic task for them. Even though it's something they can easily do on their own, if the partner will do it instinctively without putting her judgment, then that is a sign to deeply care about you. Then there's the bird test that if you point out something that interests you, like a, such as a bird outside, a partner who really cares will pay attention and show interest in the thing you're interested in, even though they don't give a shit about birds. So the bird test, that's another one here. Let's go and play this clip. Oh, look, a bird. What? Right there. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> Let me just see it. Oh. Oh my gosh. Stupid little things like that. But when we hear everything that goes on with the kind of things that we expect from our partners to do, the little things, this is now what TikTok is starting to inspire, are the little things like this. If that will make a difference to make somebody go ahead and get to be a part of this. So in the story from Inside Hook, they say that particularly for heterosexual women who seem as the primary demographic testing their male partners on TikTok, these simple unspoken acts can unfortunately be hard to come by. So they talk, talk with, or it should be Vox actually talked about the orange peel theory trend with relationship psychologist, Alexander Solomon, Solomon, excuse me. And the tests play into cis heterosocialization. Women are socialized to anticipate any needs. This can lead to meeting men's needs before men even know that before they have them. Whereas men may need to be directly told by their partners, what is exactly required of them. Kind of playing down the idea that men are a little bit dumb, but I don't really believe that's the case, but, you know, whatever. It's their idea of this. So naturally, this clash can cause tension, resentment, and a skepticism of a relationship and could be the potential catalyst for why these theories have gained some attraction. But the point is, these are tests. Now, these are simple tests. And for whatever reason, the mindset of people that think if you do the orange peel theory or the bird test is a test to say, well, if they don't pass the test, there's something wrong with them. I don't know if that's going to be really much of a determination or an evaluation you really need to go ahead and take, but this is what they talk about. So testing your partner for views or any incapacity feels bad. That if you feel the need to trick your partner with an orange, you probably already know the answer to your test. For viewers, watching one video after the other might also overstate the importance or validity of these viral theories. And they stress here that, quote, keep in mind that these trends are not the most solid advice. TikTok is also full of misinformation about sex and dating. Always take trends with a grain of salt and remember that they are designed for clicks and views. Still, the birds and oranges can teach us formidable relationship advice. Listen to your partner, show excitement and their favorite things, and do things no matter how small for them. If not, be warm, you might be tested with an unpeeled fruit. It's kind of cute to see. I'll admit, when you see it and you see somebody's actually doing it, that is kind of cute. But it's a test. And do we need to go ahead and continue to have men? Do we want to have to be tested all the time? Is that something that sounds good to go and go through? Because I would go through and figure out if you're doing it just for fun and it doesn't make much of a difference, it's kind of just playing along. Okay, I get it. But really, it's one of those things where TikTok is influencing relationships. Because you see a lot of relationships that are on there and then people are like all happy. But again, that could just be make-believe. The way they present themselves and what they're doing. Again, they're content creators trying to make money for themselves. So to try to determine that, same way we look at celebrity romances, to think that they're having some whirlwind romance and it's wonderful, that we're expected to go and think that that's something that should apply to us. And think that would be a great thing for us to do as well. But it's not. But these are the kind of stories that are clickbait. I mean, there's always a thought or when men and women can't just go and just date. Like we're getting to the point now where it's so much more relaxed than before. It's like, how much do you really learn from somebody by going through a test like that and getting to know them as a person? The thing is acts of kindness, acts of attention and consideration, just expect those if that's what you want in a relationship or someone that you're dating with the little things are fine but remember it shouldn't be done as a test if you're doing it as a test then that's a problem that might be something where you don't feel confident you don't feel comfortable you don't feel like you are absolutely in lockstep with the person that you're with they're not telling you when you should do this but the point is, is that anything you see on TikTok is, is going to make you think, is going to make you question and double think and guess yourself because what, what social media does. It's damaging in that way, unless you're taking it from an entertainment value because that's what you need to go and do about this kind of thing and realize that it's not as important as you make it out to be. Just saying. Now, another story coming out from betches.com and it's about the casual tiktok trend explained when it comes to 
relationships, when it comes to marriages, when do you know if it's true love or love bombing? So now there's a TikTok trend that says that casual things my partner and I did when we first started dating on one slide. Examples how they did literally nothing low-key on the next, like becoming official, dropping the L-bomb, or moving in together super early on, almost like it's a competition. And they're setting it to casual, the, the song Casual from Chapel Rome. The idea is that that song is essentially the anthem for being manipulated and treated like crap in a situationship. Do they know this? I don't think so. To how the song's lyric about getting eaten out is muted, in case your parents see this, I'm guessing. But the TMI on the relationship speed is heard loud and clear. And from a majority of couples jumping on this trend are dating and newly married, would you love to see how you're doing 10 years from now? Okay. So one person says, casual things me and my husband did when we first met. Number one was absolutely nothing. I told him he was my husband the night we met. We haven't separated since. But again, I'm not going to play the song because I'll probably get this taken off of YouTube if I did. Like most things viral, the casual trend is out at the point where it's getting backlash. Critics are calling out how it promotes love bombing and unhealthy relationship dynamics. But then again, then again you know, at least one fast moving now, long lasting couple who are living proof of when you know, you know. And then there are those speedy relationships that crash and burn. Instead of talking, taking talking heads on your FYP word of it, what does a licensed therapist think about relationships that launch at lightning speed and how can they survive? I'll tell you something that for me, I know that if I was dating anyone and there was some chance that something might be coming from it, I mean, it's hard if you're lonely to not start a relationship and have it start going whirlwind really fast. And I guess super romantic. And then you're spending a whole lot of time together. So the, the attention span, the attraction, the infatuation is so strong at that point early on. And you're both into it. Yeah. The trauma and relationship therapist, Alana Duran explains that extremes are really sustainable. And the trend might contribute to unrealistic standards for finding a lasting relationship because we don't know the context of what happened after their accelerated courtship or how they maintained or deepened their relationship. Let's get into it. So instant relationship, how to make it last. And this is for you young folks out there, because if you start falling for somebody hard and start, you know, really it's a deep love and you just are infatuated. And then the fantasy of what the relationship might be. I, for the longest time, suffered from that. Because I was never, ever into the start of dating someone without having that feeling of like, this is who this person is going to be. This is who I'm going to be with. And I can already see things working out like it should. And it's not. Because our expectations, what we see this person to be, it's horrible when you're doing it online too. Because then you get the thoughts and mindset of like, the dream scenario of what this relationship is going to be. And that's not good either, but we all do it. And if you're young, this is what you get caught up in really quickly. So an instant relationship, if you're getting in and things are already moving fast, you're worried about it being too good to be true. Then there are some things you can do to help sustain your speedy ship. She suggests working on having transparent communication, leaving room for mistakes, matching your words to your actions, which will help you, your mutual trust evolve quickly and trying to balance excitement and patience and approaching with curiosity is also key. It's also more about really getting to know person you are dating instead of lusting over the idea of them. Since when we're first drawn to another person, it's easy to fill the gaps of things we don't, don't yet know and craft a version of them. That is not entirely true to who they are. Correct. mundo. We all do that, especially for online dating. Don't tell me you don't. We all do it. Those moments that we're on the phone, like say, okay, you get on the phone with them and it's a couple of hours or that first date, you're out them for a few hours and then you're just playing that back in your head. And then you're thinking about what is it going to be like after that? It's going to just be that whirlwind romance in your head after that first date, that first call, that first contact, everything. I'm going to read that again. When we're first drawn to another person, it's easy to fill the gaps of things we don't know and craft a version of them that is not entirely true to who they are. This is normal and adaptive, but if we don't update our understanding of the other person when we learn new information, we're doomed for disconnection. So I always did. I disconnected all the time. 
because I never felt like I was moving to that next step. I'm a rarity. I know that about myself. Among all those that I've been with, because it was always for me the chase. This is in my 20s and my 30s, but it was always a chase. And then this excitement could last a week or two weeks. But then one problem that always happened too is when you put this mindset in your head, this is the other part that, you know, Dr. Duran doesn't explain here, but the unrealistic standards we have for finding a lasting relationship. Once we are hot and heavy, we're getting into something that we're getting in fast on it. And if you're doing that yourself, what happens when the other person doesn't have that sustained interest in you and things lapse? And then you realize, oh, you've been ghosted. Before ghosting was a word, I got that all the time. You know, after a phone call, maybe two, it would be a turnoff, I learned, to start moving in that fast, to start thinking that fast, to start talking that fast. Because at the moment, I would try to say things just to try to make it where it's like, I absolutely need to be with this person, and I'm going to do whatever it takes to get them. And I am throwing a lot of heavy artillery in terms of, charm and trying to throw out personality and trying to say the right words to coerce, to manipulate and to have that girl fall in love with me. Cause I always thought it wasn't about myself and what I do. It was to gift the gap. It was me saying the right words to get them to where I needed to go easier on the phone because my voice, you know, I always felt most girls always told me that my voice was very soothing and always, my voice sounded, made me sound attractive, right? But then if I can't get them back on the phone, if I'm not able to go and continue that going on, maybe the part is they're going to realize that, oh, there's a manipulation in there subtly because I didn't know I was doing it. Or maybe I did. Later on, I did. I knew that I did. So it was the part where I tried so hard to get closer to a woman, especially one that I wanted. If it was one that I was like, oh my goodness, this is who I want. Absolutely. And I am working it over time because I'm figuring the woman has short, a short attention span and I am hauling ass to try to seal the deal on this. So that was the one thing I used to do all the time when I just try to get a girl's number. Now, sure, you can go and meet people online and this and that, but let me tell you, trying to get the phone number, for me, it was a science. It was a craft. It was me acting almost acting like a pickup artist because let me get the phone number. If I can get it written down, bam. And I thought I'd get somewhere. And also, when we had the lack of communication that we had, I mean, look, now we have more communication than we ever have, and we still get ghosted. Direct messaging, whatever messages that you want, if we're just texting in general, and if you're not getting on the phone, The other thing that doesn't get explained here by Dr. Duran as well is that when you don't feel like things are moving along at the pace that you want, if the new relationship is not moving as fast, that date, the person you're trying to date, if you feel like there's a lapse, at first I would go ahead and try to wait and see if something would come out of it. Like I would give it like a week or two, a couple of weeks and try to just be focused on that one person. And then I learned a lesson. Oh no, they're not talking to me anymore. And yet I'm still insisting to try to talk to them, trying to salvage what, what wasn't there. And then I learned it in my late twenties, I would just start juggling multiple girls to talk to. It was like, I'm trying to find a harem. I'm trying to, what do we call it? The bullpen a rotation, right? And guys, you know, you do this too, especially with situationships. Be honest. We all know that you don't always just have that one person you fall back on. You'll have multiple. So I used to have a rotation. There were three or four girls I would actually have. I would try to get, you know, with, and they were kind of like a prioritization, like of the girls I'm talking to at that moment. The most important thing was there was one that was a priority. And like, I would drop everything for them if I can get to them. Otherwise the other ones, I kind of know what I was expecting. And it was just like, if I need to, if I need to approach them at the time that I need them for something that is going to satisfy me, then I reach out to them. 
I still remember one Valentine's Day. I remember I had to get a couple of bouquets of flowers because I had to make time for each one to show they were kind of special. I did it one year. Not so much fun. Plus, every time I did that, it especially worked during cuffing season. So in the fall, I could have multiple girls I could try to get in together with. But then right around my birthday, which is in about a month, it would always kind of fall apart. So my birthday lands just around Thanksgiving. Every four years, roughly, it lands on Thanksgiving Day. But by that point, there's nobody there. It's like my birthday is accursed. In that case, I never had a girlfriend or any relationship to celebrate with a girlfriend. Didn't happen. And that's okay. Like I'm used to it now. But I'm doing this from experience and knowing what it was like. But the young guys out here and the girls, you should know this too. You might go through your own issues where if something's moving fast, it's much more common for a girl, a younger woman, to not go ahead and start flailing along to somebody else right away. I don't think it's happened so much. Maybe it's a little more common these days, but I would think that in that part, I mean, the one part of this test here about you know, what we were doing before we got married, the young lady in that TikTok video was some of the fact that she was going to be married to this guy, no matter what, from the first time they met. And that was the plan it was going to be. But having that kind of thought is like so much. Plus the expectations that you get when that person's not in lockstep with you. Like the test is another thing too. I remember a girl that I know for a bunch of years from mutual friends. And I remember she was single and, but, you know, she would always had like different boyfriends and all, but there was one that she was with. And I remember there used to be a karaoke bar. I haven't talked about this yet, but maybe it was one of these days I'm going to have to talk about the karaoke bar. A place called Foster's. It is closed now. Foster's 2. T-U-O-O. Because there were a couple of different Foster's bar locations. There was like this local ownership and they had these three places. One of the things they specialized for the most part is they'd have a couple of nights of karaoke. And I had some friends that would go to do it that I already knew before. And then... I remember this girl that we known for years. She was a bit of a tomboy, very cute, loud, a bit obnoxious, but she was just, there was something about her that was just endearing about her. Like she was a sweet girl. Just put her effort into a guy that she was with for a couple of years. And I remember right around cuffing season, well, like about November into early December, she put an ultimatum to the guy and says, if you don't put a ring on my finger by January, we're done. Well, that should have been her answer in the first place. Because I believe she did get married. That did not last. Or there was an engagement, but nothing happened of it. That's a shame. She's like, what, 22 years old, 23 years old? Young, beautiful, could have been with any other guy, but then she puts herself into a relationship that was toxic. And thinks that an ultimatum is what's going to seal the deal. There must be something there as to why that guy didn't want it. But that's not for her to go and find out. If the guy doesn't want it, then for a woman that gets caught up in that, getting to my point, also difficult for a woman in that emotional attachment right there and the time spent. Or if it's just a little bit of time spent at all. What if they go to the issues as well about the standards or the expectations and thinking that we're going to have something, this version of themselves that they think they're going to, that we're supposed to be to them, right? Or that she thinks they're going to be to her. Dr. Duran also says that while a new relationship can feel scary to your nervous and emotional system at first, because it's unfamiliar or challenging, this doesn't mean you should run instead of ignoring those feelings. She suggests acknowledging these worries so you can better understand if it's rooted in fear of getting hurt or if it's a reaction to a red flag. And, you know, I never let myself be vulnerable that way. I never express myself at all that way. Because I feel like every time I even let myself be vulnerable, I said too much. And I would ruin it. Because I did. I know from experience, it's not like any girl that you start talking to will let you go ahead and show your feelings. But if I started doing that, then 
that's what screwed things up. So like basically she's talking about if you're going into a relationship and you've been in it for a while. So a couple of months, most likely, but you're also going to look at again, if you're going to get fear of getting hurt or a reaction to an actual red flag. And the red flag she talks about is partners who have a hard time with negative or big emotions from feeling overwhelmed, having a disagreement or being stressed. Healthy relationships need room for hardship, miscommunication, messy conversations, frustration, sadness, confusion, and shame. If you notice that your partner or you can be fully present when things are feeling exciting and happy and perfect, the connection is unlikely to be sustainable, unsustainable. Oh, sustainable, she says. I'm thinking about my friend Mark. I talked about it, well, a few weeks ago about you know dating relationships because he wanted to come on. And I'm pretty sure down the line, he's going to probably want to go and come on back and talk some more and we'll follow along where we were. But some of the other red flags you should look at in a fast moving relationship. Maybe it's one that you've kind of taken a TikTok trend or a TikTok test. And this is what you're using right now because you're in it and you're deep into it quickly. You've fallen, your, your heart is sinking in for that person already. When a partner is inconsistent and is not accountable for their words or actions towards you, if they invalidate your feelings instead of trying to understand you, or if they profess grandiose feelings early in the dating and they say, I love you too early. I know those words are strong. And I was always the one that said them too quick. When you're lonely and you haven't been with anyone at all, it's something different to at least see if the words I love you will be enough to create the attachment, to create that connection. I always thought that would try, but it didn't. And also wanting to spend every minute with you or saying you're the only person who matters to them when you're still getting to know each other. That's a red flag because of the fact that if they feel like that you only want to be with them and you have nothing else going on in your life, big problem. That's a major red flag, huge glaring red flag that you want to avoid. Dr. Drain says that there's no singular truth when it comes to feelings and the reality is that depth of love is limited by the amount of ourselves when we're revealed to to each other. And then the idea of being love bombed. Now remember, we've talked about being love bombed. That's always worked in something that's been either a toxic or narcissistic relationship, right? If you're with a narcissist, you're with someone that's manipulative and controlling and, you know, they find you at a moment of weakness, and young ladies, remember hearing this, okay? If you're being love bombed, think of the movie It Ends With Us. We talked about that a few weeks ago you know, on the program back in the summer. Go look back at that episode and remember to catch that movie and see what happens there and understand you might apply it to yourself and see what's going on. So if your new partner's grand gestures and words may be coming from a genuine place instead of being a manipulation, I know it's hard to believe in modern dating, but there are some good ones out there. So how will you know if they really love you? Dr. Grant says that there isn't ever a guarantee that someone's feelings expressed are genuine or honest. That's why trust building is so important. The more consistent someone is, the more they follow through on things, the more space they make for our emotional experience, the more they work that they, they do to understand their own patterns and wounds, that they are being genuine and truthful. More means time. So there's no substitute for time. You have to spend time with the person. But then we go back to the part where like, this is so constructed for someone that you feel like you've gone through all the issues. You have filtered out all the shit you could have gone out with the gold diggers, the sugar babies, and you found somebody that's genuine and you feel like they're, they're really in it with you. It's amazing how they talk about this. Like this, Oh, this is like so common. and so simple. It's not, but when you're getting to this point, into a relationship and you're able to get to this point because how many people do you know that are out there that are actively dating right now as much as they could be it's very difficult to go and see i go out and about and i look or how many times i go out in general and i see people that are together it's just not that easy it's just not that easy you don't see as much out there as you used to be the other thing that tiktok also exposes and amplifies as well is the idea of the retro dating dance trends. So the days of courtship. So attracting dances to attract suitors or please their parents are taking you FYPs as well. So now most popular dance trend on the platform sees men's 
sees men appeal to a woman's father with their dance moves. Before breaking the dance, men lip sync to a sound rip from Gilmore Girls' Kirk and the bizarre season short film in season two. And the sound bite, Kirk and, of course, the TikTok boys say, I love your daughter. Kirk's love interest father said, replies, what do you have to offer her? And he and all the boys say, nothing, only this. And then the men employ their goofiest dance moves. Kirk, in this particular part, uses White Lines Don't do not Do It by Grandmaster Melly Mel and TikTok Boys to Ollie Alexander's Breathe. The remix scene has seen over 100,000 videos and dozens of racked up millions of views. A video posted by Austin Pepito garnered 41 million views and nearly 7 million likes. And women leaving comments in the video say, this is working for me, I fear. I'm going to miss you when I scroll away. Another says, never skipping the love I, your do- I love your daughter trend. And another one says, I love this trend. I hope it never dies. All the boys look so cute doing their dances. So here's one. Videos dancing to that song trend. And um, I got to tell you, my DMs are full of girls. And they're full of girls. Like being like, yo, can, can you talk to my friend who's also a girl? I'm getting hit on by girls. And I'm like, where was this energy when I was pretending to be straight? Come on. So one person who's a TikToker under the handle Pokemon Master Zo says the successful peacocking is successful because people are falling for it. Those dumb or funny dance moves actually work. It's kind of a pickup act. It is pickup artist behavior. No doubt about it. Another trend has men performing interpretive dances to get something from a woman, usually their partner. One popular iteration of the trend reads, making my roommate's boyfriend perform an interpretive dance in order to spend the night. One video got over 11 million views and nearly 2 million likes. A rhythmic drum track first uploaded by a modern dancer scores the trend and has been used in over 12,000 videos. And another trend focuses on women pursuing men, soundtrack by Birthday Sex by Jeremiah. Each video reads, when he asks you to dance for him, but fall by a reason the creator is doing the dance she's doing. Fall, or for example, the one creator wrote, when he asks me to dance, but I grew up learning Indian classical dance. That received 15 million views, over 2 million likes. Another one says, when he asks you to dance for him, but you were one of Rihanna's marshmallows, referring to Rihanna's Super Bowl performance. So these are the things we have right now that are regularly being put in front of us to try to get ourselves doing something. You know, like this is the part where like, should it be that hard for us to go through these kind of circus acts to try to go ahead and get a woman? Like that's the part that guys got to ask themselves. Do we really want to go through that? Is it just a little too much to go ahead and work on and focus on to get to what we want? So if you're going to do it, I'm just going to say, you want to be able to go ahead and make sure that you're finding somebody that you absolutely positively want to go and be with. Because why do you want to go and put yourself to the trouble of embarrassing yourself in a way or doing something that you feel is very uncomfortable, is not like you? Because here's the other part too. What if you're doing this and then you say to yourself, oh, you know, you're going to do this because this will help attract a woman. But that's not something that you would normally do. You wouldn't necessarily put yourself out there to be, you know, almost kind of humiliated doing that. Would you? No. So, if you're like me and you're like, I don't know if I'm going to do these kind of things, but it's interesting if you see this, if you see these tests or you see these trends and you think that you need to go ahead and make sure you pass a test or you should do one of these trends that will attract you to women. Well, maybe some guys don't really want to go through this kind of thing. Maybe they don't want to go ahead and, you know, put themselves through a test and say, okay, I'm going to do this because maybe it'll get me the girl that I want. And my expectations are so high. And I think, you know, I have all this imagination of what this woman's going to be in my life. Maybe you don't want to go through all that. Maybe you just prefer to go ahead and just, you don't care. Like, why even bother? I wouldn't want to do it. Trust me, even if I thought about doing it back in the day, growing up before social media shows me all this, I don't think I would even do that. Instead, I didn't. I didn't try to go through all this trouble to try to find a girl. I guess I'm just like you. I just decided to be depraved and debaucherous.